I'm Miles Martin, who's written eight books in a series starting with Going Wild. Story about Alaska and its wilderness lifestyle told through my eyes over a 40 year period. I started in 1972 expecting to write one book about becoming a mountain man and achieving it in present time, written by the one living it. I believe that had never been done before. I do not think I accomplished that, partly because I now believe there never was any such book that told the truth and the mountain man as I read about it and aspired to be is a myth. Most of our heroes, as told of in the media, are people quite different in real life. I was upset. Hope I came to terms with that. I need goals, people to look up to, to strive to be like. Most of the people I look up to are very gifted at something, even the best there is, but that comes with a very heavy cost. Most are gifted, but very tweaked. In truth, few followers could not only walk in their shoes, but would not want to if they had all the facts. My main theme throughout the series addresses this. This goal has not turned out to be easy for the very reason we may well not want the truth or reality. I say many times throughout my books, the truth does not set us free. From personal experience, the truth got me in prison, and I'm a felon now. I did come as close to being a mountain man as it's possible to be. John Lennon's photographer came on assignment from New York Times to do a story on me and told me I am just like John, among the best there is at what you do. John is one of my heroes who influenced the world, changed it in a positive way through music without violence. He was killed when young by a fan. John is well, as most of my heroes are also, like me, a person of interest. Mark Twain, Hemingway, Van Gogh, Einstein, to name a few. Jeremiah Johnson, my first mountain man hero, in real life had the nickname Liver Eaton Johnson. He liked to kill Indians and eat their hot raw liver. I do not recall that part in the movie. I met a pile of women through ads in Mother Earth who saw that movie, swooned, and told me they wanted to live with a guy like that. Mostly the cold, mosquitoes, and uh, yeah, I suppose the tweaked personality ran them off. It was usually a fun two or three days though. My st writing style is a little like Mark Twain with Tom Sawyer. Life issues through humor. Partly a historical novel along the lines of In Cold Blood. There is some blood and guts and psychological terror. Into the Wild comes to mind. Same experiences, only he died and is written by someone else and only covers a few months of time. I live. It's written by me and covers a lifetime. The biggest issue would not be the subject matter. But am I a good enough writer to pull it off? I think of my writing as more science fiction than being stuck in the past. Star Trek, exploring new worlds. I want high pace adventure. I fancy myself as someone like Indiana Jones, Crocodile Dundee, like that. My story could be about having high goals, a dream, and that path. Alaska, after all, attracts boom and bust type personalities going to get rich. I'm a fossil hunter nowadays who is very good at what I do, coming home with 50,000 year old mammoth tusks worth a lot of bucks. No one knows where or how I simply return after being gone for weeks in the wilderness to places I refer to as like going to the headwaters of the Amazon. Overlapping all the adventures, mistakes, and my life, its issues and rewards is also a story that I feel involves all of us. Pollution, 
gun rights, land use and ownership, discrimination, animal rights, forms of government, and such matters as affect how we all conduct ourselves, who needs to follow whose rules and why, especially those folks out on the edge in any field of endeavor. The sheep compared to the wolves? Well, the sheep say the wolves prey on, prey on them and are vicious. Well, that would uh, not be what the wolves say. My view, issues are more between savage and civilized. It's not a compliment to be called civilized. Civilized man is the deadliest animal to ever inhabit the planet. I feel better to think of myself as a savage. My nickname most of my life was Wild Miles. In retrospect, the joke was on me. Savage and the wild to me means cares about the environment, kind, not destructive, happy with the simple things in life, and such positive things. The civilized assume crazy, party hardy, drugs, cruel, unpredictable, and such. And the big picture, yeah, it does matter what people think. Anyhow, I dutifully write it all down and write a story as it unfolds. The rewards, the price paid. Views from another angle most do not see life from. Raised upper class, voluntarily stepped down in class and economic status. Not done very often. This has allowed me to tell a story in a way civilized people can understand because I was once one of you. Well, maybe still am, or more like came back over a period of time. To share the book and art and make a living I needed or wanted, electricity and all that comes with it, computers, the internet and such, a foot and two worlds, a balancing act. Accomplishments? Why should you listen to me? Well, I graduated from um, high school with a 3.5 average, not great, but not stupid. However, after that, I fell off the radar, disappeared for 30 years, like Jesus did, maybe for the same reasons. I hung out at libraries and read a lot when young, somewhat of a pussy, and described by Bush people as another educated idiot. I wrote a lot because the family moved most of my life. My relationships were by mail before the phone was popular, much less Facebook. I wrote 300-page letters to girlfriends. Not good with the rules, but learned to feel comfortable expressing myself through the written word. My view is not to focus on gold stars, awards, grade points, classes taken, who I studied under. I have lived a life most only dream about. I am the material writers look for. The few people who live such a life have not had time or opportunity to be capable of writing about it well. I state in book one, think of this as reading someone's personal diary. Its strength will be its rawness, a story of a horse right out of the horse's mouth. Hmm, or is that nay? But seriously, the girlfriends I wrote understood what I was writing, and magazines, newspapers, were very pleased to print my story in my own words. This, after all, is partly a story of, of having a dream and going for it, learning along the way, not being perfect, and through this, learning about ourselves. I think the power, rawness, honesty comes through and makes up for the lack of technical perfection. So this concludes the general background of how I got started writing and what my books are about. Like I said, I've written eight books, and this is uh, kind of a preview. And I've got another project that has actual quotes from my books, and I suggest you follow up by watching that. And the source would be my website for my artwork, my books, my biography. If it interests you, I've got lots of pictures and other video links. That's at www.milesofalaska.com.